Most of the climbing in the Bugaboos requires glacier approach, which definitely adds an element of, I don't know about difficulty, but just an extra bit of logistics getting to the base of any of the rocks. Some of the climbs you even start literally off the snow, so you're having to put either a pack down or a sleeping pad to step off so your shoes aren't getting wet to start the initial moves. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Yo! Take them down twice. Well, the first thing we climbed was the Becky Chenard on South Hauser Tower. It's almost 2,000 vertical feet of clean granite, amazing and varied crack climbing in just an unbelievable setting. The East Creek side of the Bugaboos is really wild and remote, and so the whole time you're on the route, you just feel kind of small and insignificant, and it's a, it's a, it's a big line on an amazing peak in an amazing setting. Deep in the pigeon feathers, hanging out by its lonesome, is this multi-pitch crack climb called uh, Solitary Confinement. And uh, it's not its not super difficult, 5'11"-ish. Uh, really incredible crack piece of rock. And this roof, for several pitches, just follows this perfect splitter crack, which widens from at the base, closed to tips, to fingers, hands, and then culminates with just this incredible fist to off with. And there's really nothing else on this face that's completely blank. Uh, the, the granite and the bugs is really incredible. Um, I, don't, I don't know a whole lot about uh, geometry and all that stuff and how rocks are formed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was an objective from the beginning, but it became one once we were in there and, and kind of saw the line. It was um, to free climb the gar wall on the Fingerberry Tower, which is one of the pigeon feathers, um, and they, they kind of lie at the head of the East Creek drainage. So I think it was on day three we went up to check it out, and um, God, I was just—it was just again amazing to watch these guys climb because one of the crux pitches was about the second or third pitch, and maybe a mid five twelve. Um, kind of thin crack and Mason just hiked it first try. I mean didn't even really make it look hard and you know that at least for me anyway That's the absolute limit of what, what I can do Sunny <laughs> Chance of thunderstorms yeah. over the coconuts Whoa, they call that a coconut pee, eh? <laughs> <laughs> And then a little bit higher up, we kind of ran into a more of a, a granite slab face climbing cr crux. And you know, without much work at all, Mason figured out the moves. Um, we came back the next day. Uh, Mason fired the pitch in short order and uh, achieved what we think is the first free ascent of um, of this of this route, the Gar Wall on the Finger Fingerberry Tower. I think one of the special things about camping out in the wilderness for any uh, period of time is that it sort of gives you the chance to detach yourself from a lot of the electronic vices. No Instagram out there, there's no Facebook, you're not checking emails, so you're doing what folks did 50 years ago. You're playing chess, you're picking banjos. Yeah, we had a guitar. Yeah, we guitar, had a couple of jamming. <laughs> We played bocce, that's really, you know, that's popular glacier sport, is bocce, so yeah. we, we played some of that. Uh, Andrew made this awesome um, bocce pitch, bocce field, stadium. It was perfectly rectangular. It's a great venue, it was a great <laughs> venue. Day five of our trip, we um, got an early start from our East Creek camp and popped over the Hauser Pigeon Coal and then the Bugaboo Snow Patch Divide and dropped down into the Bugaboo Creek side of the range and uh, climbed this thing called the McDecker Red, which is a kind of a 10 minus thin 
kind of finger layback crack and six pitches and that takes you to the top of the crescent spire and then we link that up with the northeast <coughs> ridge on bugaboo spire this was the second of the 50 classic climbs in north america which we did on this trip and you know, again, just amazing stellar splitter granite on an exposed ridge high above the glaciers. And we actually ended up kind of soloing the upper half of it, which was great because again, you know, just the, the focusing on pure movement and really the enjoyment of just moving in the mountains. When we topped out on that and descended the classic cane route and then headed back to camp, and it was, um, again, another magical day in the bugs. Definitely the highlight of the trip for me was, was working with Mason and Andrew and Hayden. I've been in the sort of outdoor business for over 20 years now guiding, but to, to see the cutting edge of climbing was really inspiring for me. Being able to watch Mason climb um, and see uh, the limits of our sport was, um, yeah, was definitely the highlight of the trip for me. Cheers, buddy.